What is this hardwood lockable box that's been in the family for decades? The size is just over a foot on each side. This is a hardwood box, apparently mahogany, that has been used to store toy cars since at least the late 70s. It was given to us originally by a friend who worked in a munitions factory during World War II. I was told it was used in the Royal Navy destroyer in the war. Inside the lid is a wiring diagram. I always assumed it was for a flare gun, but I'm not certain of course hence this post. Any idea what is it for? It is for storing the detonator for a British 18-inch torpedo. These were mostly airdrop torpedoes, most famously used by the Ferry Swordfish torpedo bomber, used in the attacks at Taranto and on Bismarck. The British had a wide range of 18-inch torpedoes that were launched from surface ships, planes and submarines. By World War II, most submarines were carrying 21-inches torpedoes. What is this thing I found in the countryside of Bolivia last week with a metal detector? It's about the size of my hand, and made of some kind of metal. I think copper. Does anyone have an idea? Based on the morphology and symbolic motifs, it appears to be a 15th century copper ink and axe head. Pre-Columbian, and definitely real. It could be ceremonial, but it would depend on size. My father is an archaeologist with a PhD. I showed this to him. You should take it to a university or museum for analysis and do not polish it or clean it. What is the purpose of this metallic ring with a central slider and numbers engraved? Around 3 cm in diameter. There are some engraved letters outside and Anno 1721. On the inside are sets of numbers from 0 to 9. There's also Pisbuen the name of an Austrian mountain. The blank central part of the ring can be slid 360 degrees around before being stopped by a solid extension with a hole in it. The blank central part also has a hole. Any idea what is it for? It's not a ring for the finger, but a pendant. It's a sundial pendant. It indicates the time corresponding to the height of the sun. The monks invented it in the forests of Prussia in the 18th century. The sliding ring rotates until the hole indicates the current month. A sharp point of light appears on the time scale inside the ring and shows the local time. What is this thing I found in the garage of an old house? A tube with notches made of brass and a copper rod with a wooden handle. I twist this device in my hands and do not understand what it is needed for. It seems to be very old, probably the beginning of the 20th century. Maybe it's part of something bigger. On the one hand I found a blue thin coating that looked like ink. Maybe it's an ink device. What is this thing? It's an early 20th century hair curler circa 1930 possibly made in London, but I'm not sure. You wind the hair around the tube evenly and hold it in place with outer things. Heat up the copper rod in the fire until hot. Then insert the hot copper in the protector tube. Leave it until it gets cold. Then remove the curler and comb the hair. I found this while digging up a 100 plus year old outhouse in Bakersfield, Southern California. There is no other writing on the back, and it seems like it's plastic. We found quite a lot of bottles. The rarest is worth around $200, a couple of fancy Chinese buttons, and also lots of buggy parts and horseshoes. It was a pretty fun day. Any ideas on what this is? That is the world's first electric toothbrush, made by Dr. George A. Scott in the 1880s. It actually just contained a magnetized rod, sort of a quack medical thing. Dr. Scott, an Englishman, was the most prolific advertiser and maker of electric hair brushes and related quackery in America in the 1880s. His brushes and other devices all contained slightly magnetized iron rods in their handles, thus the curative power could only have been provided by magnetism. However, Scott apparently preferred using the term electric in all of his advertising. The conditions his brushes could cure included constipation, malarial lameness, rheumatism, diseases of the blood, and paralysis. While such claims seem outlandish to most people, each disease added to the advertising claims, opened up a wider potential market for his brushes. I found this in a drawer when clearing out a bunch of old junk. It is obviously old and solidly built. It was in a kitchen drawer with a lot of random odds and ends. At first we thought it might be some sort of cork remover, but can't figure how it would work. What is it? 
It's a late 19th to early 20th century French leg of lamb holder. This kitchen tool is a carving clamp for a leg of lamb or turkey legs. The bone is placed in the open end, and the clamp is screwed tight around it to secure the meat for easier carving. What is this collapsible wooden item? It stands about 1.5 feet high and almost 2 feet wide. It has two rubber feet, and I assume it collapses flat for storage. I thought it was a chair, but it is definitely not. It's maybe for propping something up. Any ideas? It's a gout stool from the 1920s. It was believed to be a medical device used to treat gout. It has wooden spindles that unfold for propping feet to relieve symptoms of gout. It would elevate the affected part by reducing the pressure on the joint and by slowing the blood flow to the joint, limiting the amount of uric acid crystals being deposited. What is this thing I found while metal detecting in Ireland? It's marked SS Titanic and about 2 inches across. It is solid steel then brass plated then silver plated. The brass and silver plate is worn off the face. The wear makes me think it has some age. It could be a paperweight, but the wear on the face compared to the bottom doesn't match. Any info would be much appreciated. It's a divot from the hull of the Titanic. It's a steel plug pressed out of the hull plate hydraulically for the rivet to be inserted into the hole at a later stage. Many were taken as souvenirs by shipyard workers, of which many felt a deep sense of shame and grief subsequent to the sinking of Titanic in 1912. On the ship they used SS Titanic, since RMS was given after the Royal Mail deemed a ship worthy to be a mail carrier. That's why the ship's lifeboats and lifebuoys had SS Titanic not RMS Titanic. From the wear on the face of the item, it might have been mounted on a walking cane as a handle. What is this thing I found in the ground on my parents' farm in Pennsylvania? I found this deep in the ground next to where there used to be a water mill that produced cutlery and tools. The area has a lot of history, and the house was likely built in the late 1790s. I found a ton of other artifacts in the ground from bottles to cutlery, but we have no idea what this plaque could be or why the name is scratched out. It's about 6 inches white and 3 inches tall. There are no engravings on the back, and only engravings on the front, that appear to be someone's name beginning with a K, and a date indicating their life is 1861 to 1922. I haven't been able to find any information about what this could be. Any ideas? The first name is definitely Catherine, and this must be in Chester County. I'm a genealogy hobbyist and found a Catherine Healy 1861-1922. It's a casket plaque that was likely made in the cutlery mill. That was supposed to be for a woman in your town named Catherine Healy. I'm not sure of the specifics on why it was scratched out, but it was probably due to a defect in the plaque, and it was discarded. What is this lightweight metal thing I found in a creek? The name Wallers is on the other side, and there's a blemish over the first letter of the second word at. So I'm not sure what it says. There looks like a cherub on it. I tried googling shoehorn and Wallers metal, Wallers steel, and Wallers silver with no luck. I have no idea what this could be. Please help and let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Let's make life fun.